Welcome to Scholarships Cafe. My name is Dr. Lumi Oigbalajobi. If you are new on this channel, I want to welcome you to our community and remind you to um, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification, um, like this video as well as, you know, um, make your comments on this video as well. Share with your friends. And um, if you are, you know, a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. Do not hesitate to share uh, with your friends as well. At Scholarships Cafe, we support every student, I mean every student, to have equal access uh, to scholarship opportunity. We'll support you to find scholarship through our database, comprehensive database of scholarships that we update every day, as well as, you know, we provide support services, which could start from, you know, a 35 minutes consultation to address your questions about scholarships, as well as, you know, provide assessment of your profile. I mean, we even provide a recap and free CV review as well. We also support our students with our uh, intensive masterclass that usually lasts for uh, three days, which is intensive, and also with 160 slides and, you know, hands-on sessions where you learn how to write an academic CV, how to write an SOP, how to even search for professors in your field, how to send a cold email to professors, and, you know, common interview questions, the red flags you need to check out on any scholarship, whether they are fraudulent or they are real or not, and also before you say yes to a professor and institutions, what to check out. We also offer like personalized consultation that could last from three months to six months. We can work with your time to ensure that you are successful. So today, uh, I want to address a question that you know it was um, put up to me yesterday at an event, and the question is, Dr. Muiwa, how do you stay focused? You know when you're applying for scholarship opportunities or, you know, global opportunities generally, especially for Gen Z, um, which um, these days they have quite a lot of distractions. And from my story, um, especially in academia, I haven't spent 16 years, um, there are peculiar strategies that I've used then. And before I go into that, it's very important to note that the scholarship terrain is quite competitive. You might be watching this video today or maybe you're watching this video in 2050 or you know, 2030, but will still remain that there are limited opportunities out there and you cannot afford to be complacent. You cannot afford not to take your destiny into your hands. You cannot afford to be distracted. And when you look at scholarship, whether you have a 2-1, whether you have a first class, whether you have a 2-2, whether you have a, a pass, there are certain strategies that works for everyone that you must ensure that you take note of. And the first thing is setting clear goals about the type of scholarships that you want. You know, um, you cannot um, desire scholarships when you don't put in the effort. So you need to set clear goals. Am I applying for scholarships in Germany? Am I applying for scholarship in South Korea? Am I applying for scholarship in China? Am I applying for scholarship in the United States? Am I applying for scholarships in Canada? Am I applying for scholarships in Japan, whether in New Zealand, whether in Rwanda, whether in Tanzania, whether in Nigeria? You need to set clear goals of the scholarships that you intend to apply for and have the deadline written. When I talk to my students, I do emphasize that either you have an Excel sheet or you have a diary where you have those scholarships listed and the deadline. Early this year, I made a video that lasted about one hour. You know, about 50 scholarships you can look out for in 2024. And some of those scholarships will still be reproduced in 2025, 2026, 2027, to time you don't even know. So you need to get the list of these scholarships, you know, set your clear goals. When is the deadline? When do I have to apply? And you need to create a schedule for yourself. You cannot be jack of all trades. Okay, application opens in fall. When do I need to get all my documents in place? When do I need to submit my essay? Do I even need to write professors before I can get those scholarships? When do I need to get my reference letter? It shouldn't be when the scholarship closes in two days that you start running here and there to get your references. You need to know whether you need official transcript. Do you need an application fee? Do you even need to apply for application fee waivers? Do you need to take GRE? Do you need to do West? Do you need to, um, you know, submit a one-pager CV like for people in business? Or you need to submit a CV that is not limited? So you need to create a schedule for yourself. Break down all those 
important task into pieces. Like at Scholarships Cafe, we work with a student. We say, okay, this is what you need to do in the first three months. This is what you need to do in the first, in the in the fourth month, the fifth month, the sixth month. You can all be applying for a scholarship that opens tomorrow, and then you don't even have your personal essay in place or some of the credentials, or now you need to apply for your certificate. So you, even if you are an undergraduate student and you're watching this video and you're in 400 levels, you need to ensure that, okay, I need to work hard. I need to protect my CGP because in four years, I need to apply for scholarship. We've mentored several students, over 60,000 students, and a few of them had scholarships right after they left their NYC with a full ride fully funded PhD. But some of them had been following me for like two years before they can even apply for the scholarship. So you need to create a schedule. You need the third thing that you need to emphasize is staying organized. Like, have a spreadsheet to include deadlines, have a spreadsheet to include the name of the professors. Like at Scholarships Cafe, we have an application tracker we give our students that you can list the name of the university, the name of the professors, the email, the deadline of the applications. Those, do they even reply? Like you have a comment section. So you need to stay organized either digitally or using a spreadsheet or even having a file that you write something. Like I, use, I still use my diary, which is here. So that is the thought. And the fourth thing is to limit distraction. There are quite a lot of distractions out there that you cannot afford to fall into that space. Whether you're on social media, I talk about social media as a tool for scholarship opportunities. When I tell my students the benefit of staying on social media, whether you're on LinkedIn, whether you're on X, you need to follow the right people. Accounts that will not benefit, you can stay muted or block them. Because on those social media platforms, you should ask me this question, why do you get scholarship providers on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Hex? Because they want to ensure that their scholarship opportunities is well diverse and targets the right people. And having a social media profile with your real name makes a lot of sense because you can get engaged with professors that are even recruiting students. At Scholarships Cafe, we've mentored certain students, a few students, significant numbers of students that got scholarships with the first conversations that they had on social media platforms with professors. So you need to limit distractions. You can't be that person looking for global opportunities and you are engaged in dragging people on social media platforms, engaged in sharing nude pictures, sexist posts, political posts, rivals, and, you know, attacking people. It doesn't show a good personality for you. See your digital footprint as your social media. So you have to limit distraction the, the 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 fifth one i'm going to talk about is being staying motivated you know one thing that makes me stay motivated is to understand that scholarship opportunities are levelers so if you have no opportunity to self-fund your scholarships or self-fund your study abroad you need to stay motivated think about the benefit of scholarship that we do address in our first class for our master classes a mentorship program Free tuition, you don't have to hustle. You can stay organized on your study, focus on your research, focus on your hypothetical questions because you get free money. I left Nigeria in 2013 with 100 US dollars. It was a dollar to 160 naira then, so which I left with 16,000 naira, courtesy of the Korean government scholarship. So think about how to stay motivated by looking at the benefit of those scholarships. MasterCard provides almost everything you need, including settlement allowance, clothing allowance, mobile phone, laptops. You can study in the best universities in the world with MasterCard Foundation, UBC Scholarship um, at UBC at McGill, Arizona State, Edinburgh, Oxford, Cambridge. So look at those benefits. You can pass that on your wall to get you stay motivated every day so that you don't get distracted at all. Like, you know, think about how your life would change for good. I've been around the globe, visited more than 15 countries because I won scholarship. And some of those countries are full right paid scholarships to attend conferences, events. Boom, benefit of scholarship includes you even having access to become a permanent resident, a citizen of, of other countries that provides that after your scholarship. 
like international or contact, you know, networking, attending events, having mentors across the globe, having support system, contributing to your own country, you know, being that change, being that change maker, having that social impact that you're empowered with scholarship. So get to stay motivated because of the benefit of you getting scholarships across the globe. You have no limitations. You can change fields. They give you opportunity to achieve your goals to the maximum. So stay motivated. The, the, the sixth one is six support. You have seniors, you have platforms like Scholarships Cafe that could help you to be accountable. Get to find out about such platforms, get to find out about such seniors, your colleagues that are already in grad school, that already won scholarship. Let them go through your essay, create time. Even if they don't reply you, take it easy with them because they're also going through a whole lot, maybe workload. But that's why we have Scholarships Cafe. We have a master classes, which we provide accountability platform. We provide close support system. Don't go through the application with the fact that, oh, there is an application fee waiver. Out there. I'm going to put in my applications for 100 institutions. When rejection comes back, I'm going to go into another one with more rejections, more applications. No way. You can be applying for scholarships. When do you don't put the right strategies in place? And this is what we treat in full at Scholarships Cafe, that when you join any of our master class or coaching program, we train you how to identify scholarships, how to craft academic CV, how to reach out to professors, how to have a compelling profile. So seek support like mentorship, reach out to your seniors, reach out to your colleagues, create a support system for yourself. If you've been able to identify people that are looking for scholarship, you can get a connect get to mentor each other, become accountable for one another. And the seventh one is the fact that you need to stay, take breaks. Like, you know, sometimes it's quite tedious, tiring, cumbersome, overwhelming. When you're writing your applications, writing your essays, you need to take break to recharge. Rejections might come. You might need to take break to reflect on what you've done that might be inadequate. You might need to send a feed message for feedback to the institutions or scholarship body to know where you need to improve on your application. You're not a failure. You just need to reach out. Maybe you need to do something better. I know of someone that recently reached out to me, won a scholarship in Korea, and she said, this is our second time of applying for those scholarships. And then it was almost the same thing that she reproduced and submitted, and she won it a second time. So you might be going through rejections, don't match every rejections with fresh applications. Take breaks, reflect, you know, recharge, reload, and get to understand maybe there are certain things that you need to do. Maybe you need to work on your academic CV. Maybe you need to work on your personal essay. Maybe you need to take GRE. Maybe you need to take West Evaluation. Maybe you need to ask for feedback. Maybe you need to, to thoroughly review your essay. So that is very important. And the last part is celebrate, you know, small wins. If you've had scholarships, even partial scholarships that you can take up, understand that you've done well to even be able to achieve that. And I mentioned this in my CV of videos, like you need to quantify some of the scholarships that you even decline. You know, celebrate mouse, small milestones. Do not let people tell you you're not enough. Like, do not let people tell you you should not celebrate your wins because you're the only one that can, you know, put out your story out there. Staying focused is maintaining that balance between your applying for scholarship, being diligent, having self-care, and with the right mindset, the strategies that I've listed, eight strategies, trust me, you will stay focused and your success story is just right around the corner. So if you've misplaced some of these strategies in the past, this is the time if you're applying for fall, 2025, 2026, 2027, spring in every any year that you're watching this video, you need to ensure you have all the strategies in place, set your clear goals, stay motivated, do not be distracted, stay organized, take break, celebrate small wins, believe in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, no one can believe in you. And I wish you all the best. Once again, Please, um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do, do not hesitate to subscribe. Share with your friends. And if you're looking for support, do not hesitate to check the description section of this video for our consulting services. I cannot wait to celebrate you. My name remains Ulumi Ray Balajubi, and I wish you the best out there. Ensure that you put in the application and let the system decide. Bye for now.